gearing is very hard, I think, for truck racing because it's very long, very long and fast corner. Some corner it's uh, for two or three times turn to one side. It's overheating the front tire and especially in this weather. I hope that uh, we have uh, better results than uh, Hungary. You know, I mean, I like the track. I mean, this track is quite nice. It's a little bit bigger for track racing, but it has a lot of corners, very fast corners. And uh, yeah, I mean, I hope to, to do as best as I can and to take uh, as much as point as we can. You know, I think that uh, the team did a very good job to rebuild the, the track from the crash in, in uh, Hungary. So I hope that everything runs well and we can do, we can do good results. No, I would say that the Slovakia ring is uh, historically one of the most demanding circuits. Uh, temperature also are not helping, very hot days, so of course tires will be uh, under challenge. Uh, but I think you know this is part of competition, tire management is part of the competition, of any competition, so of course the tires can cope with uh, um, the whole day. The weekend got underway in very, very hot conditions with a familiar grid, Norbert Kish and Sasha Lenz on the front row with Jochen Hahn right behind. Early on, jostling occurred as ever with Jochen Hahn trying to get ahead of the number two machine and the number two machine trying to get ahead of Norbert Kish. Norby opened up a gap in the early stages though and would continue to build on that lap after lap. Nobody, unfortunately, able to catch him by the end. There were some shenanigans further down the order. Stefan Fass here getting past Louis Requenko as he ran wide and very quickly came under attack from Clemens Hecker. Andre Kurzim engaged in battle with Antonio Albacetti, who was looking to build on some pretty mediocre qualifying by his standards. Around them as well, though, were Adam Lachko and Steffi Halm. Steffi had got ahead at the start of the race and Adam was looking to get the position back and it took him quite a few laps to get back up to the pace of the Vico. But in the end, a small mistake by Steffi would let Adam through and she would spend the next couple of laps stuck to the rear of the Bagheera ZM Racing Freightliner, but unfortunately would not get back through before the time the race ended. Jamie Anderson was absolutely flying and he was taking bits off the back of Antonio Albacetti's truck as well as they both got involved in chasing down Andre Kurzim. Andre showing everybody why he's one of the very best defenders in this championship. The dust being kicked up was a bit of a theme all weekend as well, as you'll see in the latter races too. The wind blowing it all over the surface and all over the pit buildings and the garages as well. But Andre held on and withstood the heat in many forms from Albertetti and Jamie Anderson. The Don't Touch Racing Machine certainly lived up to his name as well. They really couldn't touch him in the last couple of laps. But another driver that couldn't be touched in the final few laps was Norbert Kish. His 69th win in his career was a very, very easy one by the look of it. An absolutely emphatic victory to get his weekend underway. Sasha Lenz took second place with Jochen Hahn in third. Both of them having a bit of a lonely race by the time it all completed. But eight laps of this circuit taking quite a while and the tyres took a hell of a battering to go with it. But the big red Hungarian Revesh Racing Team truck pulled up to the number one spot once again for the sixth time this season. Yeah, this circuit is really, really hard on the tyres. I mean, uh, you should take a look at the tyres and... Uh... They, they, they don't have such beating anywhere else in the in the season. You know, this is for sure the hardest on the tires. So it's, uh, I guess it's all about the tire use, the tire management um, in one lap in a qualifying, just as well as in the race. Uh, because yeah, it's very difficult.
Nobikish opens his Slovakia Ring account this weekend with a win in race one. So it's truck one, P1 once again. Sasha Lenz, truck two, P2, nearly eight seconds back. Jochen Hahn rounds out the podium and Adam Latchko just gets ahead of Steffi Halm in the latter stages of the race due to a mistake from the number 44. Andre Kersim holds on very well ahead of Antonio Albacete and Jamie Anderson, who ends up winning the Promoters' Cup in that race. Stefan Fass is promoted into ninth position after a penalty for Shane Brereton for causing contact near the start. Jose Rodriguez was in 11th ahead of Clemens Hecker. Louis Requenco had a few moments near the end of the race, which dropped him down. And Teo Calve unfortunately finished down in 14th place after retiring near the end. How many tyres can a driver use per weekend? Um, for the top 10 drivers, they are allowed to use uh, six new tyres per day, maximum. Okay, so they have to manage because here the track is very aggressive with a very fast corners. So they have to improve to, to, to save the, the tyres. The second race of the weekend would see Jamie Anderson starting on pole position, his day getting even better after winning the Promoters' Cup in the first outing. He would start alongside Antonio Albatetti with Andre Kurzim and Steffi Halm on row two. Adam Latchko and Jochen Hahn would be looking to gain positions early on from row three, but it was a lightning start by Jamie Anderson that helped him keep his lead. The rest of the field all closed in on one another. A scary moment between Jochen Hahn and Sasha Lenz over the brow of the hill but Sasha would keep his foot in and carry on piling the pressure on into the race. Norbert Kish benefited from it, going around the outside of Jochen Hahn, and soon he would be trying to get past Adam Latchko, who in turn, much like he was in the first race, tried to get past Steffi Halm. Eventually, Norbert Kish would get through, and then he himself would try to get ahead of the number 44, Iveco. Antonio Albacetti was putting the pressure on Jamie Anderson, at the very front of the field, but Jamie was soaking it all up, taking every single corner in his stride. They could see all the trucks piling in behind, though, and the moves were starting to come their way. Norbert Kish here getting past Steffi Halm with a great move around the outside of the left-hander. Down towards turn 13, he would have the inside line and eventually the position. Adam Latchko would try his luck as well at trying to come through down the inside of Steffi Halm, who is forced to take a wider line around the ever-sweeping turn 13. But Steffi would defend very hard indeed. And in this case, Adam would not get through. Before long, it was Jochen Hahn that was putting the pressure on Steffi Halm. He himself, with Sasha Lenz, had also got past the Bagheera ZM Racing Freightliner. And now Steffi was having to defend once more, much like fellow Iveco driver Andre Kurzim. This beautiful cutback, though, from Norbert Kish was one of the absolute highlights of the weekend. It was a manoeuvre that he'd been completely prepared for from a few corners previous, and he got the position and would carry on moving up the order. Jochen Hahn's progress was slightly halted by Sasha Lenz launching an attack into the last few laps of the race. And then we would see the battle erupting between Norbert Kish and Antonio Albacete, the reigning champion, taking on the Spanish racing legend lap after lap. Every single corner they were battling, though, was buying Jamie Anderson time in the lead. There was a bit of deja vu down into the hairpin at turn 10 for Norbert Kish, as for two or three laps in a row, he tried the same move time after time. Eventually, he would get down the inside and with a little bit of contact, would get through at turn 13 before heading off over the horizon to chase down Jamie Anderson. Jamie would put in an absolutely monumental defence, though, in the latter laps, and the reigning champion could not do enough to get through, and that is not for lack of trying. But the Brit would take his first ever win outright 
in the Goodyear FIA European Truck Racing Championship. Norbert Kish came home second with Antonio Albatetti third. And in this searing heat of the Slovakia ring, all the fans were very, very happy with an incredibly entertaining race. But Jamie Anderson was over the moon. A great win with a Promoters Cup and an outright win on the Saturday. And it's good for us all to be here. Our dramas in Hungary, um, and then now second race to start on pole and finish in first place in front of some of the best drivers. You know, the fastest championship is a good, ex a good experience. It had taken 87 races for Jamie Anderson to stand on the top step, but with Norbert Kirsch and Antonio Albatetti alongside him, he was not in bad company at all on the podium here at the Slovakia ring. Smiles all round in the sunshine as Jamie Anderson takes his first ever outright win in the championship and with a great defensive drive as well against Norbert Kish. Norby having a very good Saturday as well with Antonio Albatetti grabbing a podium. Jochen Hahn finished fourth ahead of Sasha Lenz after a great scrap between those two and Adam Lachko once again came home just in front of Steffi Halm. Andre Kurzim rounded out the top eight just ahead of Jose Rodriguez who grabbed a second place in the Promoters' Cup and Stefan Fass rounded out the top 10 for his second Promoters' Cup podium of the weekend. A really good drive by the Tankpool 24 racing driver. Teo Calve improved to 11th, but he was only just ahead of Shane Brereton. Clemens Hecker was 13th with Louis Requenco rounding out the field. First words after the qualifying uh, P6, but you have some really fast laps uh, there, of course. Um, but are you satisfied with the result of the qualifying? Yeah, for sure. The first part of the qualifying was very good. Then uh, we changed a little bit. But uh, in the in the Super Bowl, I got too much trouble with the front tire, so I didn't have a turn in, and that's why uh, it was not possible to take a faster time. You won yesterday, second place, second race. Uh, you're aiming first right now for this race again. Yeah, you know, for sure. Um, we have the pole position. Um, we have, uh, I think, a good speed advantage over the others. Um, of course, the start is always really tight because Sasha is always very, very good at the start. So it's always difficult, but you know, I try to do the best I can. I try to stay in front and, uh, and go for the win. Yeah, for sure. Race three of the weekend would see the same front row once more. Norbert Kish alongside Sasha Lenz. But Adam Latchko this time would start on the inside in third, with Jochen Hahn in fourth on the outside of the grid. Antonio Albatetti was best of the rest with a load of trucks to hold on to. But into the first couple of corners, Sasha Lenz managed to get his nose in front. And Norbert Kish would have to work really hard to keep the truck down the inside and not let the SL Truck Sport machine get through. Adam Latchko had a fantastic view of it as the two of them went over the hill down towards turn two, completely, completely level. Norbert Kish would make advantage of turn three as well as turn two, being right-handers and hold the inside line, though. And obviously the benefit from being on pole position worked in his favour. Sasha would keep the pressure on, though, and Norby would definitely not have an easy couple of opening laps. Albacete was looking good in fifth position as well, attacking Jochen Hahn in the early stages. Jochen this time having to look in his mirrors rather than watching what was going on ahead. Teo Calve and Stefan Fass getting involved in some of the early shenanigans as well, further down the order. The whole field stayed nice and bunched together though. In the opening stages, there seemed to be even gaps all the way up and down the pack. But Antonio Albacete dropped down after a mistake in the first sector had hindered him. Stefan Fass would later become a fantastic cameraman for us to see some of the later battles, but at this point he was just inside the top 10 trying to hold his position. Another driver trying to hold position was Adam Latchko. He came under immense pressure from six-time champion Jochen Hahn as the tyres seemed to wear out on the Bagheera ZM Racing Freightliner in the middle stages. 
for a couple of laps it looked like Adam was going to get away again but before too long Jochen was able to stick his nose down the inside and muscle his way through great close racing once again though from these two absolute titans of the championship I mentioned Stefan Fast becoming a cameraman well we would get a fantastic look at how it all works inside the cab of his Scania as he tried to chase down Shane Brereton, who in turn would chase down Andre Kurzim. The three of them would be locked in battle all the way to the end of the race. Stefan showing us sometimes it's even easier to drive with just one hand in these trucks rather than using both on the wheel at the same time. But while we got a good insight into how it looks inside the cab, Antonio Albatetti got an insight into how Teo Calve wants to defend his positions. Round turns 10 and 11, it got very close and a little bit muscular at points. Antonio bouncing across the grass on the exit of turn 12. Jose Rodriguez able to capitalise on that. But up at the front, it wasn't so hard, was it, for Norbert Kish? He made it look very easy once again, taking another win in race three of the weekend getting his Sunday off to a good start ahead of Sasha Lenz and Jochen Hahn once again. A repeat of yesterday's podium would see Norby, a very happy man, and he spoke to Christina straight after the race. It was a good race, the start is tight as always, um, and in the first two turns we go side by side, which is nice. Um, but uh, yeah, in turn three I could go ahead and uh, start to build a gap again, so yeah, you know, good race, um, I think. The team did a very, very good job, you know, with the track, with the setup and everything, and it works really, really well. On the long term as well, I think we have a good tire management, so very happy, very happy with this weekend so far, and a really nice victory, yeah, so very happy. And for the second day running, Norbert Kish takes a win in the first race of the day. And, funnily enough, he's joined by the same two men on the podium as well. Sasha Lenz finishing in second, Jochen Hahn finishing in third. Adam Lachko finishes in fourth position in what was his 400th race in the championship, with Jamie Anderson getting a fantastic fifth place overall and a win in the Promoters' Cup. Steffi Halm finishes sixth ahead of Andre Kurzim with Shane Brereton and Stefan Fass right behind him. They put the pressure on right till the very end. Teo Calve broke into the top 10 for the first time this weekend after another challenging time on the Saturday and hoping that his Sunday would continue to improve. Jose Rodriguez was 11th ahead of Antonio Albatetti, Louis Requenco 13th and Clement Hecker rounding out the field in 14th place. But a nice close race with the whole field separated by less than 40 seconds. The final race at Slovakia Ring this weekend would see Shane Brereton on pole position alongside Andrei Kurzim, two drivers that were battling most of the way through race three. Steffi Halm and Jamie Anderson would start on row two, both of them getting a good start. Contact coming between Jamie Anderson and Andrei Kurzim due to such a speed difference as they got away from the line. Shane Brereton would have to defend both sides as they came out of turn one with Kurzim on his left and Halm on his right but a little bit of a move over to the right-hand side, locked the two bumper bars together, and in a very, very scary moment, they both slid wide, connected together, and took out Adam Lachko. All three trucks, though, were somehow able to limp on, but unfortunately, we would lose Steffi Halm after another half a lap or so. Adam Lachko and Shane Brereton, both very lucky to be able to continue under the circumstances. The rest of the field all tried to take advantage of it, though, with plenty of jostling going on between Norbert Kirsch and Jochen Hahn in the mid-pack. Theo Calve even getting sideways with a little bit of contact of his own. But Andre Kurzim kept the race lead with Jamie Anderson second, but already behind them, Sasha Lenz and Norbert Kirsch were third and fourth as the whole field tried to find their way 
through the insane amount of dust that was lingering in the air. Norbert Kish certainly had his sights set on the back of Sasha Lenz as the two of them piled on through behind Jamie Anderson trying to close up to the Promoters' Cup leader. Jamie now found himself tied for the championship lead in the Promoters' Cup, so he didn't really want to get in the way too much as the guys tried to make their way through. Sasha Lenz with quite an easy move down at Turn 3. Norbert Kish would have to work a little bit harder through Turns 4 and 5, but he too would get the move completed on Jamie. That now meant that the two of them could get past and go chasing Andre Kurzim, the Don't Touch Racing Iveco, leading the way for a number of laps undisturbed. The question then came of would Norbert Kish get past Sasha Lenz first or would Sasha Lenz get past Andre Kurzim first as the three of them all concertinaed together? Well, the answer soon came. Sasha Lenz down the inside of Andre Kurzim on the way into turn three. And he would just about outbreak him and get the benefit of the inside line on the exit. Norbert Kish would try his very best to follow him through as well, just like he did with Jamie Anderson. But this time it wouldn't be such an easy feat. Andre Kurzim certainly getting his elbows out and trying his best to defend into turn six. Norby would use every single bit of the power that he gets from that Rives Racing MAN, though, and he would soon be nice and tidy through into second place. And it wasn't long before he then went after Sasha Lenz. He tried the cutback manoeuvre that we'd seen him pull off a couple of races prior, and the two titans at the top of the table would soon be top of the standings in the race and side by side into turn one once more. It was beautiful, clean racing between the pair of them, though. But ultimately, Norbert Kish would come out on top and start to open up a bit of a lead. Jamie Anderson trying in the background, as he might, to get past Andre Kurzim to take what would be his overall second podium in the championship. But unfortunately for him, it did not come. Norbert Kish made it three race victories out of four this weekend and showed us with some of his amazing drifting just how happy he was about it. It was an epic display once more, and the championship lead gets bigger and bigger after every single race. The Hungarian would be very, very hard to catch now as the season moves on and the next four races at the Nürburgring enter everybody's mind. We, we were a little bit lucky um, in, the, in, the, in the first lap because in front of us, I think, there was... a. Uh, I don't know the end result, probably nobody stayed there, so not a big crash, but I think they stuck together, Shane and Steffi and Adam, and there was some fenders flying, and I, I saw that one of them uh, broke the windshield of Johan, not mine, but the windshield of Johan, so that's, uh, it's, it happened to me before as well, and I know it's, it's difficult to drive when, when, the, when the windshield is broken right in front of you. Norbert Kish rounds out an impressive weekend with another victory ahead of Sasha Lenz once again. Andre Kurzim gets another podium to add to his tally, while Jamie Anderson wins all four Promoters' Cup races with a great overall fourth place. Jochen Hahn finished fifth ahead of Jose Rodriguez, Antonio Albertetti was seventh, Adam Lachko eighth, Stefan Fass and Heinrich Clemens Hecker would round out the top ten. With ten seconds between trucks 24 and 25, Shane Brereton, Louis Requenco and Teo Calve would round out the field. Norbert Kish heads to the Nürburgring with a very handy points advantage. The four races there, though, are a perfect opportunity for Sasha Lenz and Jochen Hahn to try and reel him in on home soil and provide their big, big fans with some much-needed victories. Adam Lachko finds himself fourth in the standings with a 20-point buffer over Antonio Albertetti. Steffi Halm is just behind, ahead of Andre Kurzim, with a little bit of a buffer over Jamie Anderson. But he finds himself now ahead of his countryman Shane Brereton and Theo Calve in the overall standings. Stefan Fass is one point clear of Anthony Zaniak, with René Reiner, Jose Rodriguez, Martin Gibson, Heinrich Clementsecke and Thomas Robineau rounding out the table.
Jamie, four in a row. Uh, congratulations. What a great weekend it was uh, for you. How are you enjoying this special moment? Yeah, real good weekend for us as a team. You know, um, we've really climbed back up the leaderboard on the uh, Grammar Cup. Um, it's been a good thing for us this weekend. Really turned, we thought, from qualifying on the Saturday morning that we, it was just going to be another nightmare of a weekend, but we've really got in the rhythm. Um, team have done a fantastic job. Smiles all round then in the Slovakia ring sunshine after a fantastic weekend of racing, the next of which comes up in two weeks at the Nürburgring in Germany from the 15th to the 17th of July. We hope to see you there.